Hey, what's up you guys? As you know, I'm a DO, which means that I attended an osteopathic medical school. And while it's definitely the majority of the same medical knowledge that you would otherwise learn in a run-of-the-mill allopathic school, there are a few different add-ons that you'd have to know about. First, you have to learn osteopathic manipulative medicine, which honestly, for simplicity's sake, is a lot like a more intense version of chiropractic medicine that involves not only the spine, but the bones, the muscle, and the connecting myofascia. All of it just sort of connecting the body. Now, I swear my medical school dean would probably hate me that I compared osteopathy to chiropractics, but honestly, I can't think of a better comparison. And the two studies sort of came along around the same time in the 1800s. Anyways, the other really big difference is that you approach patients with a thought that they are treated as a whole person, and not just the ailment or the illness that they're suffering from, but also consciously thinking about their spirit and their connection with the rest of their body. All right, so now that I've explained some of the big differences between allopathic and osteopathic medical school, let's talk about the board exam itself and the big differences. The COMLEX, or the Comprehensive Osteopathic Medical Licensing Examination, is what the osteopathic medical school students have to take in order to pass their medical school and be board certified. Now, I'm sure you're guessing that, of course, it's probably very similar to the USMLE, which is the allopathic counterpart, which is how they become board certified physicians. But let's point out some of the main differences. Now, like I said, you'll have to know osteopathic manipulative medicine. The exam itself is also laid out similar to the USMLE in blocks. And there isn't going to be a specific section on just osteopathic manipulative medicine or specifically testing you on osteopathic principles. It's going to be scattered throughout the entire exam randomly. And you'll have to know it on the spot, just like any other board exam. The questions can range from how you want your patients to be in a starting position before you start a specific manipulative technique, or what bone or myofascial dysfunction are you treating given the history and physical or exam findings that you're given in the stem of the question. Other questions could even be as discreet as what's the Chapman's point in a patient with appendicitis? Hint, it's not the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. So I had to really study the Green Book or the OMT Review 3rd Edition by Savarees and really memorize a lot of the points that are really just sheer memorization. I'll be posting a lot of the easy ways I was able to memorize some of the Chapman's reflexes and other trigger points on quick drawings because at the beginning of the exam, you'll be given a laminated sheet and a wet erase marker so that you can take notes during the exam. This should specifically be used to draw out your points before you start your exam so that you have time to just look down at your sheet as you're taking your exam and get the easy answer. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? All right, the next big difference is some of the main content of the exam, including the big one, microbiology. There is a huge emphasis of microbiology on the complex and knowing some of the nitty gritty details of the testing processes for some of the microbes that the USMLE just simply does not dive into. And by this, I mean really knowing the mediums that certain microbes are able to grow in. For example, what microbes grow really well on blog auger? Now, it's pretty hard to prepare for microbiology because it's quite a vast and difficult subject, but I just want you to be aware of this big difference on level one. They love microbiology. So if you don't love microbiology, be prepared to lose quite a few points if you don't study it and get it down to their nitty gritty detail because the complex will even ask some of the zebras of microbiology, such as some pandemic diseases that aren't necessarily the bread and butter of what you will actually see in an everyday practice. The next big difference is statistics. And while it's tested to some degree, it's not nearly as strongly tested on the USMLE. The USMLE will give you complicated graphs that you may have to interpret. The complex will not be as complicated in terms of the statistical questions, but you should definitely still know the equations for calculating really important numbers, such as sensitivity, specificity, the positive predictive value, and the negative predictive values. All right, finally, let's get down to it. How did I do so well on the level one? First of all, I studied all the same stuff that I would have for the USMLE, and I took the USMLE first. I then took a week after that to study and memorize the green book, memorize the Chapman's points, review my osteopathic medicine, and review that book really well. I then completely stopped doing U-World in that week and just focused on a complex question bank, such as ComBank or Conquest. Either one will do. I really focused on the microbiology questions, osteopathic questions, and I did not waste time doing pathology, medicine, or statistics because I really didn't need to. I already had that breadth of knowledge from doing the USMLE U-World questions and drilling those concepts on my first aid. So it's pretty much like studying for the USMLE, just adding on a complex question bank, drilling microbiology, and studying the green book in a week prior to your exam. I highly recommend doing the USMLE before you do the complex. As I've already alluded to before, the structure of the examination is also a little bit different. The USMLE is divided into seven 60 minute blocks over an eight hour session, and each block is 40 questions. The complex, however, is divided into eight total sections with two overall four block sections that have a four hour limit each, including a 10 minute break authorized after the first two sessions each time. So that means that there's more questions, more blocks, and less time per question. And in addition, 
addition, the US Assembly grants you an additive bonus of being fast. Therefore, you can rack up your break time if you didn't take it all. But the Comlex is not so rewarding. Those authorized breaks will time out whether you take them or not. And those minutes that you've saved either going through your questions quickly or taking a shorter break will not roll over to your next break. So I would recommend just taking that full on 10 minute break or that 40 minute lunch break that they grant you after four sections. Now I'm gonna go into more detail about how I studied osteopathic portion of level one and show you my tips and tricks for memorizing those nitty gritty crucial little details. Those small details will really rack up into a lot of points on test day. Remember that the majority of the rest of the exam of studying for Comlex was essentially just like studying for the USMLE, which you can watch this video on how I did that. As always, please like and subscribe so I can keep providing you with content for free and please comment below and ask me anything. Now I realize I've kind of been MIA and not really answering a lot of the questions and I've been a little bit late on answering some of your guys' questions and I'm really sorry. It's just that residency is super time consuming so I apologize in advance and I promise I'll start to get to those questions as soon as I can. Anyways, good luck.